Welcome to our lesson on sorting and filtering in databases. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at sorting, filtering, as well as some data validation techniques that you can use to ensure that data entered into the database is accurate and valid. Let's start by looking at how to sort in Access 2010. Let's look at our table that we have open. And I'm going to sort the surname field from A to Z. So all I did was select the actual field, and then you can select the drop-down option and select sort A to Z. There we go. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is sorting a numerical value or currency. So let's scroll over to the donation amount. I'm going to select the drop-down, and I'm going to sort it from the largest to the smallest. We're now going to look at something called a filter. And this is quite a useful little function as it filters out information according to your specific criteria. So for instance, we would want to know how many people donated more than 50 Rand. Let's look at our table again. I'm going to select my drop down. Do not right click, just normal select. And then I'm going to select the number filters. I want to see those that have donated more than 50 Rand, so I'm going to select greater than and I'm going to type in my value, which in this case is 50. Have a close look at the number of records at the bottom of your screen. At the moment we have six. Let's apply the filter by selecting OK. You'll see that we now only have four. That means that there's four people that paid a, a 50 Rand or more. So if we scroll back to the side, Okay, these are four people that donated 50 Rand or more. It's very important that you remove the filter once you're done, and you do this by selecting the toggle filter option on your table tools. Right, so we've deselected our filter or deactivated it, and all our records are visible again. It's very important that the data entered into your database is accurate. So there's a couple of things that you can do to ensure that when people enter information, it's done in the proper way. Um, a few basic things that you can do is you can select the correct data type. So instead of people typing in a date, for instance, you can select the date time, and at least the computer will convert whatever's typed in into that specific format. You can also change the field size of a, pro of a specific field. For instance, for an ID number, you would need 13 digits, and for a mobile number or cell phone number, only 10. So you can restrict how many characters they're allowed to enter. There are some other more advanced options that you can use to make sure that the data entered is valid. And we're going to look at those now. Firstly, we're going to look at something called an input mask. To do this, I'm going to open a new table. So let me close the current one. And let's move to table input going to go to my design view and I'm going to select my mobile number because here's where I've set up a specific input mask. If you have a look at the field properties at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that next to input mask I've entered 10 zeros. Now this is a specific type of code that is used by Access to determine what kind of information should be entered into this field. A zero represents any character from zero to nine, or any number from zero to nine. So this will prevent people from adding information like question marks or the ampersand sign, for instance, and it will also limit them to how many characters they can insert. Let's look at another table. So let's close this one and open the valid rule one. Remember to set these validation techniques, you will need to be in design view and not in data sheet view. So I'm going to switch to design view quickly. And I'm going to go to my donation amount. If you look at the field properties for donation amount, you'll see that next to validation rule, I've entered some kind of criteria. I've entered greater than or equals to zero. Because surely a donation can't be a negative because that would mean that you're donating to the people who should be donating to you. Together with your validation rule, you can also enter some text. And this will appear in a text box or a pop-up 
for your users. Let's quickly have a look at how this works. So I've entered a validation text here, a donation cannot be a negative number. Let's go back to our data sheet view to test this. I'm going to scroll over to my donation amount. Okay, and I'm going to try and enter a negative number, minus 50. Right, and you'll see that the pop-up will appear with the message that you inserted here. So a donation cannot be a negative number. You'll say OK. And this error message will keep on appearing until you fix the problem. So let's quickly fix the problem. Let's change it back to a positive number. Right, and there you will be allowed to go on with your database design or with entering your data. Two other techniques that could be used to validate your data is to set a default value or to make the field a compulsory field. Let's look at how to do that. Once again, you're going to need to be in your design view. So I'm going to select design view. And let's make the email address a compulsory field. So here where it says required, it's already a compulsory field, but you'll need to select yes. And that will prevent the user from moving on to the next field without entering, without entering data. So that's obviously useful when you want to make sure that you've got the contact details, all the email addresses of these people. All right, let's have a look at our default value. I'm going to set a default value for the donation amount. So click on donation amount, go to the field properties. And next to default value, I'm going to type in 50 Rand. So I'm going to assume that most people will at least donate 50 Rand to the charity. Um, obviously, some people won't want to donate and some might want to donate more. So a default value can be changed. So don't worry about setting the default value. Uh, all that's going to happen now is when you insert a new record, that 50 Rand will already be there. So you don't have to retype it, but you can change it if you need to. Let's close our database now, our table. And that concludes our lesson on sorting, filtering, and data validation.